In this video, we're going to be talking about primarily the manipulate tools, copy, move, scale, rotate. We're also going to be discussing the delete element tool, and that'll be our first topic. If I look at my modify group up here, and this is for the home tab, there is the delete icon. It's the red X. I'm going to click on the icon. Now, there are several ways that we can go about selecting elements to delete them. I can just move my cursor over an element and do a data, left click, and that will remove the element or delete the element. I can also hold the left button down and drag my mouse out. By holding it down, I can do a crossing window, which is right to left, dashed box, or if I go the other way, left to right, it's a solid box, that means inside. So if I cross over these elements, dashed box, I release the left button, they're highlighted, I accept that by doing a data. Now you may run into situations where you have elements that are either complete duplicates or coincident in part. If I move my cursor over this element here, you can see this long arc. If I wanted to delete that, I could just data. But there's a shorter, thicker arc here. If I move my cursor over both the longer and the shorter arc, you notice that the longer arc is highlighted. Well, to cycle through them, on my mouse, I'd click the right button. That cycles through the next element. Once it highlights the element that I want to delete, I data, left click, and then I move my cursor off and I've removed it. So that's just some of the basics on deleting. So I'm going to go ahead and do an undo all. We're going to move to the next topic. So we're going to go to file open. And we're going to be going to the element selection tool. Now the element selection tool, which is our default tool, if we look at our tool settings window, it says element selection. We have two rows of icons here. The first row, this is the methods for selecting the elements. The second row is kind of the modes for doing this. Now the recommendation is leave it set to individual for the first row and new for the second row. And we'll talk more about that in a moment. With it set to individual, this gives me the ability to select elements in three different ways. One is I can just move my cursor over an element. I'm going to move it right here. I'm going to left click or data. And you can see the element is highlighted. Now I do have it set to new. So if I click on another element, what happens is the other element is unselected and the new element is selected. That's what the new on the second row does. It's a new selection set. Now, if I wanted to add more elements to my selection set by picking, I could on my keyboard, hold down my control key. I could then click on or data on elements that I want to add and I can also remove by clicking them. That's holding the control key down. You can add and remove from the selection set. I'm going to let go of the control key. If I want to clear my selection set or unselect all the elements, because I have it set to new, I can then move my cursor into an open area and I can left click or data. That will clear my selection set. We'll look at another way to do that in a bit. I told you this one individual option gives me three different ways to do this. Picking or doing data is one way to do it. I can also on my mouse hold down my left button and drag my cursor. And just like we saw with the delete tool, we can either go from right to left, which is crossing, or left to right, which is inside. You also can switch by hitting the shift key, the inside and overlap. So let's say I move my cursor this way, and let's say I would like to be in the inside mode. Well, right now it's dashed, I'm in overlap. If I, on my keyboard, tap the shift key, you'll notice that it changes from a dash box to a solid box or from overlap to inside. And I've hit shift again, I go back. So now that is a kind of a cool thing to be able to switch back and forth because sometimes when you start your selection, you have already committed to doing the selection and in a certain direction, and then you realize, ah, I should be in overlap or inside. And hitting the shift key will toggle that. So this is one way for me to select. I can just drag across, release, and I've selected additional elements. Again, to unselect, because we have it set to new, I'm going to left click and clear it. Now, I can also, if I select elements, I'm going to do it in dragging across, I can add to my selection set, again, by holding the control key down, and I can drag across and select additional elements and to continue to select until I get the elements that I want selected. Now, why would you want to select elements? The reasons are endless. To copy, move, scale, delete, change their attributes, a whole bunch of different reasons why you would want to select elements. We're just talking about how does the tool work. So I'm going to go ahead and clear my selection set by doing a left click. And there's one last way to select. And I'm going to start up here. And I'm going to hold the left button down. And as I'm doing this, you can see it's a rectangle. If I, on my keyboard, if I hit the Alt key, that toggles it from rectangle to line. And if I hit the Alt key again, it's back to rectangle. Hit the Alt key. I'm in crossing line mode. And then I can just 
drag across what I want to select, I release, and those elements are selected. So I'm going to clear the selection set. Now on the tool settings window, there are four other icons that allow us different methods for doing this. There's block. Now block is just a rectangle. Hitting the alt key will not toggle to the line mode and it will not let me pick elements to add to the selection set. It must be a rectangle. The next one is shape. It's a polygonal shape. The next one's circle. The next one is crossing line. Again, each one of these is discrete. If I do circle, I can only do circle. Hitting alt will not toggle me to doing a line. This one at the beginning, which I mentioned, individual, gets me all three. Gets me pick just by picking, left click, or I can hold it down and do a rectangle, or I can hit the Alt key and do line. All three methods are for individual. That's why it's recommended that that's the one you stay with. Now the second row, we were using new. That meant I can create a new selection set. And it also, because it's set to new, I can clear my selection set by clicking in an area where there's no elements. That will unselect everything. The next icon, is add, and then one after that is subtract. Add is purely just add. It does not let me remove elements from a selection set. Even if I hold the control key down, it won't let me do that. And the same thing with subtract. It'll only subtract from the selection set. Again, I can't hold the control key down and add. The fourth icon over is invert. It's a personal favorite of mine. An element is in one of two states. It's either selected or it's not selected. And what the invert option lets me do is just invert that state. So I'm gonna select that. And I still have it set to individual. So I'm going to go ahead and select some elements, crossing over here. I'm going to then drag across and select some more because I still have it set to line mode. Now, if I drag across these again, they are currently selected, it will unselect them. Again, that's what invert does. It inverts their state. If you have elements selected using invert, how do I clear my selection set? Well, that's where the fifth icon comes in because we're no longer in new, we're in invert. Invert says, says I changed the state. I'm either select or unselect. The last icon there, which is the fifth one over, when you have elements selected, one or more, it is in a clear state. And if I click clear, you're going to see the two elements that are currently selected will become unselected. And when I do that, you're going to also notice that the icon changes in appearance and in function. It is now select all. And if I do click on this icon now, it selects all the elements in my file. Even if the element is on a level that's turned off, it will be selected. So you want to be careful about using that. It's not just what you can see on the screen. It's every element in the file. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that to clear the selection set. Individual and new, that's your pro tip. Leaving it set to those two gets you the most bang for your buck. There are more options on the tool settings window. There's a little down button here that says show extended settings. If I click on that, what you're gonna see are a series of tabs. And these tabs are essentially, for the most part, attributes. There's like level, color, style, weight. When you go about selecting elements, you can either select them using this method and select all the elements of a specific attribute, what level, color, style, or weight, or type, or you can filter your current selection set. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select some elements and I'm going to hold the button down. I'm going to hit the alt key, go to my rectangle, and I'm going to select these elements right here. Now you can see I've selected elements that are different in appearance, color, style, and weight. If I look at the level tab here, you can see I have two different levels represented in my selection set. Now, the level that I want is this level, these elements here, level 22, miscellaneous construction detail. So I want to remove 40 from the list. So I can just remove it from my selection set by clicking on it, and that will unselect elements with that attribute. So this is a way for you to select a bunch of elements where it's easy to do, and then quickly filter out what you don't want by any one of these attributes, level, color, style, weight. And you can also do it by element type. If I click on tab for type, you're gonna see there's arcs and there's lines. So I can remove by element type. So this is a very powerful tool for selecting elements. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm in individual and I'm in new. So I'm gonna click where there's no elements, clear my selection set. So now we're gonna move on to our next topic. So we're gonna to go to file open. The next topic is going to be the place fence tool, and we're going to be looking at fence tools. So now I'm going to go ahead and expand this. You're going to see there's a lot of options for using the fence. The very first one is place fence. Now, none of the other ones are going to work unless you have a fence placed. So if you try to select like, you know, delete fence contents, it wouldn't work because you don't have a fence placed at this point. So let's go to place fence. Now on the tool settings window, fence type and fence mode. For fence type, you can see I have a 
number of options, block, shape, circle, element, from view, from file, and from flood. Block and shape are the two most common used. So we're going to use block as the first method. Second, we're going to look at fence mode. We've got six choices. Inside, which means completely 100% inside the fence, not touching the fence boundary, becomes part of what we could refer to as the fence contents. Overlap, everything inside or touching the fence boundary. Clip, everything inside and eclipse it, cuts it right at the fence boundary like a cookie cutter. Void is the opposite of inside, everything outside not touching. Void overlap, everything outside or touching. Void clip, everything outside, and then again, eclipse it at the boundary of the fence. So we're gonna do inside first. And let's say, for example, what we wanna do is copy this assembly box here. So I'm gonna go ahead and place a fence, again, doing block method. And you can see that I didn't include the arrowhead. I am overlapping the arrowhead and, and the leader lines there, but I have it set to inside. So only elements that are completely inside. Now, once I have a fence, how do I know if a tool works with fence? Well, if I go to something like copy element up on my manipulate group on the tool settings window, if you do see use fence as an option and it's there and I checked it, that means that tool works with the fence. And you get an option to also set the fence mode if you want to. And again, it remembers the setting before. So now I'm going to be copying the fence contents. So I'm going to go to the bottom of this object and with data, I'm going to move my cursor over and you can see the fence boundary and you can see a preview of the fence contents there too. So I'm just going to do another data. And again, it wants to make another copy because it's copy element. I'm going to hit reset and you can see the fence boundary is still there. Once you're done with the fence, you want to get rid of it. And because I'm in the element selection tool, element selection and fence, they kind of compete with each other a bit. So if I left click, because I'm in element selection, that should clear my selection set, that will clear the fence too. So if I left click, the fence is gone. The other way to get rid of a fence, and let me place another fence, you can only have one fence active at a time. If I tell it I want to place another fence by clicking on the icon, that will dismiss the active fence. So if I go to my place fence icon, if I click on it, you'll see the existing fence disappears. So we're going to check out another mode. We're going to look at clip and see what that does. So I'm going to do an undo, control Z. I'm still in the place fence tool. I'm going to have it set to block. I'm going to change it to clip. And then I'm going to place a fence like this. And you can see I'm kind of overlapping, not getting the entire shape there. And I'm going to go to my copy element tool. And again, it remembers my fence mode from clip. And I'm going to do what I did before, pick a point to copy from, pick a point to copy to. I'm going to hit reset, right button on my mouse, and you'll see the fence is still there. Again, I'm going to dismiss the fence because I'm in element selection. I can just left click anywhere. That'll dismiss the fence. Now you're going to notice there's a line down here. And if I hover over this, it says it's a complex shape. When you're using clip and you copy or move, it will heal the shape instead of leaving that open. Now there's a preference that we can turn off optimized fence clipping and that's what it's referred to. So it would not heal that. So we're going to take a look at that quickly. So I'm going to do an undo. I'm going to go to my preferences. So I'm going to come up to my quick access toolbar up here, the very last icon. I'm going to click on that. This will open up my preferences dialog. On the far left, I'm going to go to operation and you're going to see here under fence operations, optimized fence clipping. That's turned on. That's why that shape got healed. So we're going to turn that off and we're going to click OK. We're going to repeat the process and see what happens. We go back to our place fence. We're going to place that fence again. We're going to use the copy element tool. We have it set to use fence and clip. Same thing we did before. We're going to clear the fence by doing a left click. And what you're going to notice now is it didn't heal that shape. So if you don't want that to happen, you need to turn that preference off. It's under preferences, operation, and it's optimized fence clipping. That tells it to heal or not heal shapes. So we're going to do an undo and we're going to move on to our next topic. So we're going to go to file open. We're going to be going to move element. And we're going to come up to our manipulate tools. We're going to go to move. So what our job is going to be here is to move this part of the detail down a little bit, separating it out. So what I'm going to do is select multiple elements by holding the left button down and I'm going to go from right to left. I'm going to select as much as I can and you're going to see that I missed a few things like the text here and this text up here. I can add to my selection set by holding the control key down, 
add those elements to the selection set. And now I've got them all selected. Now it wants to pick a point to move from. I'm just going to be moving this straight down. So I'm going to pick a point over here, an arbitrary point, data. I'm going to move my cursor down. I see the preview where I think it looks good, straight down, I data, and then the elements are moved down. So that's the move tool. I'm going to go ahead and do an undo, and we're going to move to the next example. I'm going to go to File Open. We're going to go to Copy Element. And what we're going to see is how to copy elements. Now we're going to go up to our Manipulate group. We're going to go to Copy. And we have an option on the Tool Settings window to tell it how many copies we want. We can just make one copy, or we can make multiple. We also, again, have the option to use a fence if we had one active. We do want to make two copies, so we're going to swipe across that. We're going to type in two. Now I'm going to select these elements again, and I'm going to make two copies. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my inside mode, and I'm going from left to right, and I'm going to come up and making sure that I'm only selecting the parts that I want. There we go. Now I've got them. Now I told it I want to make two copies. I'm going to tell it where to copy from. And then as I move my cursor to the left, I'm telling it how far and what direction I want the first and the second copy to go. So when I do a, another data, which I'll do in a moment, the first copy will be placed and the second copy will be placed at the same distance from the first copy and in the same direction. So I'm going to do a data. And there it is. And again, it wants to make another copy. So I hit reset and I'm done. Now I'm going to go ahead and do an undo. Now when you do the copy, you can place your copy. And this is true about move also. So let's say, for example, if I draw a line, and I'm going to draw a line just straight down like this. So let's say I wanted to make a copy of these elements again, and I wanted to place the copy by this point here relative to here, 30 over. So I'm going to use the copy element tool. And this time I'm going to get to it by hitting the space bar and the pop-up menu appears. So I'm going to use the copy element. I'm going to select these elements again, just like I did before. I'm going to pick the point to copy from. I'm going to do a data right there. Now I want to place the copy not at the top of the line, but relative to the top of the line. And this is where AccuDraw comes in. So I'm going to move my cursor to the top of the line, the yellow X, which is AccuSnap appears. On my keyboard, I do a control and then tentative you're going to see the AccuDraw compass appear. Now I'm going to move my cursor to the right, and I'm going to type in 35, and then I'm going to data. And again, it wants to make another copy. I hit reset. So using that control tentative or set origin, I can place the copy right where I want it to be and not have to make the copy, then separately go to move to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and do an undo all. We're going to move to the next example. File Open, and we're going to go to Rotate Element. So what we have here is a base plate, a skewed base plate. What we need to do is make the example on the right look like the example on the left. So this plate right here, we need to rotate it. So we have an idea of 25 degrees that we want to rotate it. So we're going to hit the space bar. This is going to bring up your pop-up menu. And we're going to see right here is our Rotate tool. So I'm going to select Rotate. And on my tool settings window, I have three possible ways to rotate. I can rotate by active angle, rotate by two points, or rotate by three points. We're going to be doing active angle first. And I'm going to go ahead and set the angle here. And the angle is 25, but it's actually negative 25 in our example. So I'm going to type in negative 25. And this comes out to 335. I'm going to be picking the elements that I want to rotate. It's going to be these interior elements in here. So I'm going to hold down the left button. And I'm going to go from left to right to make sure I'm in inside mode and only select those elements on the inside. Now it wants me to pick the point to rotate about. So I'm going to pick this point here, data. You get a preview. Now if I leave my cursor there, which I should do, it's going to rotate it about that pivot point in the center. But you can see I move my cursor around. I can set the pivot point to be anywhere. So I'm going to go back to the center there and when a data, and there it is rotated around. Now there was another way that we could have done this. So I'm going to do an undo, control Z. On the tool settings window, we've set the method to three points. Again, we're going to pick three points to define the rotation. So we want to select the elements we want to rotate. So just like I did before, we're going to select these elements here. 
it wants me to pick the point to rotate about, the pivot point. That's going to be in the center here. I'm going to do a, a data. Looks like I'm drawing a dashed line. What I'm doing is defining the start of the rotation. So I'm going to move my cursor to this point right here, straight up. I'm going to left click or data. And now it wants me to define the amount of rotation. We have a line here that represents the angle of rotation. So I'm going to pick the midpoint of that. I'm going to data. And there it is. So that's a couple of ways to go about rotating. If you knew the angle, you could have rotated by angle. Or if you didn't know the angle, but you had elements that represented the angle, that's the method three points. You could have used that. So I'm going to go ahead and undo. We're going to move to the next example. I'm going to go to File Open. And then we're going to go to Scale Element by Active Angle. So what we have is some directional arrows. The two up top need to be scaled up to look like the ones on the bottom. So I'm going to be going to my Scale Element tool. So I'm going to hit the space bar. And then right there is Scale Element. On the Tool Settings window, I have two different methods for scaling by Active Scale or by three points. We're going to be doing Active Scale. And in this example, the Active Scale is set to 1.6. I knew what I needed to scale these up by, so I had preset that. Now on the Tool Settings window, there's a little lock to the right of the X and Y scale. If I click on that, I can then change the X and Y scale to be different. But if I click on it, then it's going to lock the two together. So I change one and the other one syncs up. So right now I've got my scale set to 1.6. It wants me to pick the elements to scale. So what I'm going to do is this is a shape. So I'm going to pick this element. I'm going to pick it right here, data. And then again, it wants to know where I want to scale it about. I'm going to do it at the same point there, data. And I'm going to do the same thing here, data and pick the same point, data. And now I've scaled them both up, again, by a scale of 1.6. I'm going to go ahead and do an undo for both of those. And we're going to move to the next file. File Open. I'm going to go to Scale Element Tool by three points. Now what we have here is a drainage detail with just one detail in it. The border that you're looking at here, it's set up for a 50-foot scale. Now it's very common that when details are drawn at Caltrans, that the concept of no scale is applied, meaning that the drawing is done proportional, the detail, but there's no actual scale applied to it. If it was all drawn proportionally, we can scale it to its actual size. So we're going to be zooming in here. And if we look at these sizes, if I go to my Measure Distance tool, so I'm going to hit the space bar, third row, first icon is Measure, and then I'm going to go to Measure Distance. Now we have a dimension here that says two feet, but let's measure that and see what it actually is. So I'm going to pick this point here, and I'm going to pick this point here. And if we look at our tool settings window, it says that that distance is 50 feet. Well, that's not two feet. This has obviously been scaled up to fit inside the border. Now we need to scale this so that that is actually two feet. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom out a little bit. We're going to be going to our scale element tool. So I'm going to hit space bar. And there's scale right there in the middle. On the tool settings window, the method is already set to three points. And the reason it's set to three points was when I was in this file before, I changed the method to three points, I saved my settings. Then that meant whoever opened the file up next, when they went to the scale element tool, the method would be set to three points. That's why it's important to always check your tool settings window. And because we're scaling on the X and the Y, we checked proportional. That's important. So now what I'm going to do is select all these elements. And I'm going to pick a point. I'll zoom in here to scale from. This is three points. So this is point number one is the point to scale about. I'm going to pick the end of that line, data. Now it wants to know a reference point. That's going to be this point over here, which says that's supposed to be two feet, but it's actually 50. I'm going to pick that point. That's point number two. And then as I move my cursor, you can see everything is getting scaled. Well, you'll notice that AccuDraw was at the point to scale about. It's the AccuDraw compass. So as I move my cursor left and right, if I just on my keyboard type in two, that means that that new distance, the distance to scale it about will be two feet. So on my keyboard, I type in two and making sure that I'm indexed along the AccuDraw axis. I'm going to data. Now it's much, much smaller. If I zoom in now, Let's go check our measure. Go to space bar. I'm going to go to measure and measure distance. And if we measure this distance from here to here, you can see on the tool settings window that distance is two feet. And if I wanted to check down here, this should be three and a half feet. 
pick this point here to this point here. Again, it's three feet, six inches. So that's a way for you to scale something that was drawn proportionally. If you know one of the values, in this case, our dimension of two foot helped us, we could scale it by three points down to what we want. So we're gonna go ahead and do an undo. I'm gonna go to the next file, go to file open. We're gonna go to mirror element. And the first one we'll look at here is are these pipes over here. So we're gonna hit the space bar, brings up our pop-up menu. And in the middle, there's our mirror. Now on the tool settings window, for the mirror direction, we've got three options, vertical, horizontal, or line. We're gonna start by doing vertical. We also have an option to make a copy. So you can mirror the original or you can tell it you wanna make a copy. Make copy is probably the most common thing people do. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the elements to mirror. I'm gonna come over here, select them like that. It wants me to pick a point to start the mirror from. So I'm just gonna pick here near the break. I'm gonna do a data and I'm gonna move my cursor to the right. And this line that I have drawn in the center, this dash vertical line is just representative as the split or the mirror line. So you can kind of visually see. So I'm gonna to go to this point here, some point on this vertical line. I'm gonna do a data. You can see it wants to mirror the copy it made. So I hit reset and there's my mirror about a vertical. The next example will be about a line. I'm gonna select these elements here, making sure I don't select these ones here. I'm gonna pan over a little bit. Now I have it set to line, so it wants me to pick two points. That defines the line. So I'm gonna to go to one end of this dash center line here, data, and then I'm gonna to go to a second point here. It's looking for, again, two points to define the mirror line. I can do this. I can pick just data points in the open area, or typically it's about points that you already know, like in this case, it's the center line. So I'll do a second data, and there is my mirrored copies about a line. So I'm gonna do a couple of undos there. We're gonna to go to our next example. So we're gonna to go to file open. The next one's gonna be stretch element. Now on the manipulate toolbox, there's an icon, it's in the far right in the middle, it's called stretch. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. Now stretch basically allows me to take vertices or endpoints and stretch or move them. So I'm gonna do two examples here. Let's say this pipe end here where the break is, if I wanted to maybe have this break be further over to the right, this is using the fence functionality. I'm gonna left click and you can see it looks like I'm drawing a rectangle. That's essentially a fence. I'm gonna do another left click and you can see there's the area or fence that I'm gonna be stretching. Whatever vertices are inside here, they're gonna get stretched and or moved. I can just pick an arbitrary point and I can move my cursor to the right. Again, AccuDraw makes it simple for me to be indexed or locked on that axis. I'm gonna do another data and you can see essentially it's stretched everything over. I'm gonna hit reset. Now another example down here, let's see if I wanna take this part of the pipe assembly and I wanted to basically move it over one foot. I'm gonna go ahead and draw a rectangle around. Again, it's essentially a fence. So what it wants to know is where do you wanna stretch from? and where do you wanna to stretch to? So I can do this really picking any arbitrary point because I'm gonna do it to the right one foot. So I'm gonna just pick an arbitrary point, data, and I'm gonna move my cursor to the right. And how far do I wanna go? One foot. Again, I'm using AccuDraw, so I type in one, and I data, and then reset. And you can see that 10 inches plus 12 inches is 22 inches. And you can see uh, the dimension went with it, and these arrowheads and everything else went with it also. I'm gonna do a couple of more undos. Let's go to file open, look at our next example, which is gonna be the construct array tool polar. Again, we've got this base plate as an example, and you can see these holes here or bolts along the edge here. What we need to do is have this one look like what's on the right. So we're gonna be going back up to our manipulate group. We're gonna be going to our construct array. On the tool settings window, we have three different methods. We have rectangular, polar, and a long path. We're gonna be doing polar, and in the next file, we'll be doing a long path. So I'm gonna choose polar. Here, it wants to know how many copies. Well, this is the example that we want to replicate, but we wanna do it on this other side. So if you look at how many points we have, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're gonna tell it we wanna do eight. It wants to know the delta angle and the total angle. Now the total angle is, in this case, we wanna go 360 degrees around. So our total angle is gonna be 360. So we'll type in 360 
and hit tab or enter. And what you're going to see up above the delta angle, which is essentially the angle between the holes, is going to be 45. So you can put in either one of those two. Now there's an option for rotate items. This will rotate an item. And sometimes if it's a circle, something like that, you don't really, it doesn't matter. But there are going to be times when you're going to definitely want to make sure rotate items is checked. So in this case now, it wants us to pick the element that we want to in this case, array. So we're going to come over here, find the center. Now where you pick does matter. So I'm going to do a data. And then as I move my cursor out, what you're seeing are preview of the first one. And then you're going to see dots where the subsequent ones will go. Now I'm going to find the center here of my circle. That is the point to array around. I'm going to do a data. And then there it is. You can see I've done a construct array, the polar method there. So I'm going to do an undo. We're going to go to File Open. Take a look at our next example, which will be the same tool, but we're going to do a long path. So what you're looking at here is a roadway drawing. You can see we have a guardrail. And what we have here are basically paved edges or striping. And these are going to be barriers. Now, if I zoom out, you can see this line here. As I zoom out more, we need to copy those barriers along the path so it's every 20 feet and you can see this path kind of curves. So that's what we're going to be using the construct array for. So I'm going to go ahead and clear the selection set. So what I'm going to do, show you the tool. The settings are already set because I saved settings. Construct array with the method set to a long path. For the mode, we have three choices. We can tell it how many copies we want, the distance between each copy, or we can use both. We're going to be doing distance, and our distance option is enabled. We're going to tell it 20 feet. And in this case, rotate items, um, we want to leave that turned on. Now, this is a tool that doesn't allow me to select multiple elements. It lets me click on one, but I want to basically copy both of these barriers. So I'm going to need to go to my element selection tool. So I'm going to come up here to element selection. I'm going to select the elements that I want to array. I'm going to go back to my Construct Array tool. All my settings are set here. Now it wants me to identify the reference point. So I'm going to go to the center of this first barrier, do a data. Now it wants me to identify the path element at the start. So that's going to be this line right here. So I'm going to go to the start of that line. I'm going to do a data. Now if I move my cursor to the left along that path, as soon as I get to 20 feet, you can see the first copies appear. So I'm going to zoom out by scrolling my wheel, pan over. I'm going to zoom in on the end of this line, and that will be the end point. So I'm going to data there. And then you can see all the copies appear, and the last two are still highlighted or selected. So I'm going to go to my element selection and clear that selection set. Now if I pan on down, you can see all my barriers are right along that line, perfectly spaced at every 20 feet. So that's the Construct Array tool using the Along Path method. I'm going to do an undo. I'm going to go to File Open. And our last one is going to be the Copy Parallel tool. So in this example, we're going to see three different Copy Parallel methods. So we're going to come up here to our Manipulate Toolbox. On the Tool Settings window, we're going to leave it set to Element because we want to copy parallel, the entire element. And we also want to tell it to make a copy in this case. So we're going to pick this arc right here, do a data. And you can see we're copying it parallel. If you're an AutoCAD user, this would be your offset tool. So I'm going to copy parallel to this point right here, do a data. And again, it wants to make additional copies. I'm going to hit reset. Now, if you know the distance you're copying it parallel, you could have checked the box and put in the value. We also have a measure tool. So you could actually measure the distance you want to copy it parallel, which is kind of cool. So the next one is going to be segment of an element. So I'm going to select that. And over here, what we have is a shape. And if we were to use the element method, then it would copy parallel the entire element. We only want to copy a segment of this shape. So we're going to data here and move our cursor up. We're only taking a segment of that shape. I'm going to do a data and a reset. So that's the next method. Now the last one, which is portion of an element, here what we're going to do is we need to copy this line here again, but we just need to have it between these two lines. So what I'm going to do is move my cursor to the bottom here. Now you notice it's 
highlighting one of the elements. That's not the element I want, but that is the point on the second element I want. So I'm going to do a data, and then I'm going to hit reset, and you can see it cycles to the other element. I'm going to slide on over. That big red thick line is how much of the element do I want to copy parallel, the portion, if you will. So I'm going to go to this point here, selecting the other line, data, and now I move my cursor out, and I can pick this point here and then a reset. So that's the three different copy parallels. So hopefully you found this helpful. You'll be productive with the manipulate tools.